Hello, I'm Sensei Alex Kikuyo, North American Correspondent for Buddhist Store Global. Thanks for joining me for this episode of The Ordinary Buddhist. The title of today's talk is Nonviolence in the Buddha Dharma. Before we get into that, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I post talks in the future. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that'd be great too. Recently, I was out in the barn getting some feed for our chickens, and I opened up the bucket to scoop that feed out, and what do you know? There was a field mouse inside. (laughs) Now, it's a little cold around here. I'm guessing he ran into the barn to get warm, and then he realized there was some feed, so he climbed in, and it just happened the feed was low enough that he can get into the bucket, but he couldn't get back out. And... The fault is my own. I didn't secure the top on the bucket like I should have because I honestly believe that there were enough stray cats around that a field mouse couldn't penetrate our defenses. Clearly I was wrong. However, this did leave me with a conundrum because while a mouse is cute to look at, they're also problematic for what we're trying to do here. They can carry disease, and if mice feces gets into our animal food, it can cause sickness for our animals. So, I have a small mouse who the sutras tell me is a Buddha, just like you and I. I also have animals I'm trying to care for, and the mouse potentially could be a threat to them. What to do? Now I should stop and say, at this point, normally what would happen on a farm or a homestead is that mouse would go to mouse heaven. He'd end up in a trap or something of the like, and that would be that. However, as a Buddhist, I've taken a vow to not kill when possible, so I scooped him up, put him outside, and asked him politely to not come back. I also bought a new bucket with a better lid, to ensure he couldn't get into our food anymore. This was the nonviolent action that I thought was the best stance to take. And in that moment, I realized something about nonviolence as it pertains to Buddhist practice. Because oftentimes, we as Buddhists think that being nonviolent means that we allow ourselves or other people to be harmed. We may even think it's an important part of spiritual practice to take the abuse that's lashed onto us by other people. However, if we understand that we are Buddhas, just like everyone else, including the mice in our field, then we understand that we are worthy of care and compassion just like everyone else. We too must be protected. However, the world presents us with a dichotomy. We can either be violent and lash out at other people, or we can be passive and allow ourselves to be attacked. Buddhism, however, offers us a third option in non-violence, in which we don't attack the people who cause us harm, we simply create situations where we can no longer be harmed by them. So, for example, with the mouse, one solution would be to kill it. And like I said, that's the typical solution you find on a farm or a homestead. Instead, what I've chosen to do is make sure that all of our containers are new, that the lids are on tight. I'm double and triple checking now. I've learned my lesson. So even if a mouse does get back into the barn, they can't possibly get into our food. Thus, the mouse is safe and our animals are safe as well. Not Um, able to get any diseases that might come from mice, feces, and the like. This non-violent attitude of not harming others, but also not putting ourselves in a position where we can be harmed, applies to daily life as well. Maybe we have someone we don't get along with. Well, we can choose to just not talk to them. Maybe there's certain media that every time we consume it, we feel terrible after the fact we can choose to change the channel. Maybe someone posts something on social media we don't like. Well, we can get into a Twitter argument with them or blow up their Facebook feed with mean messages, or we can simply block the person and choose to not engage with their content anymore. 
These non-violent actions allow us to both protect ourselves from harm and others as well without causing harm to others. In this way, we protect all the Buddhas in our lives, both the one within us and the ones within others as well. Even the little field mouse who wants a bit of grain in the winter. Amitabha.